one of the things I found when I was in my late 20s, I put on a, a lot of weight. Mm. And, you know, people would say things, and inevitably you internalise it, but you mm. don't necessarily have the immediate community around you to yeah. express that. What you're asked to do, invited to do, expected to do as a man is simply to laugh it off. Yeah. But it can be incredibly affecting. It's, it's like death by paper cuts, I think. All those little tiny comments, they might not draw a lot of blood, but eventually sure. it, do you it think, wounds deeply enough. Do you think that gay men are more critical of each other? I think it's a quite a complicated question. I think it's true across the board that what has changed whether it's gay men or straight men, are, is the kind of paradigms of beauty in the media. Yes, and I look at all these men's sure. health magazines sure. and these pictures of men on the cover with all their perfectly formed middle It's bits. true of men, it's just as true of, of women. You know, the um, perfect paradigm is not true. And of course, what's really interesting is when you meet people that have these perfect bodies, mm. you ask them to identify their perfect part and they can't. they can't. If you're getting on the scales and you're seeing that maybe the weight is dropping, it builds healthier habits. Yeah, but the weight doesn't going. drop on a daily basis. I think it's actually going to work the... Uh, well, I would think it would work the opposite. Mm. You should be so paranoid and you, you become consumed about weighing yourself every morning. I don't think that's Do you ever healthy. weigh yourself? Or? I weigh myself like once a month, but I don't make it a big thing. I don't put pressure on myself. I think doing it every day installs pressure and it makes you even more paranoid, I think. Also, yeah. if you work out a lot and you do weights... Mm. You put um, on weight. You put on weight, yeah. muscle weighs more than flat. Yeah. So the whole business about weight and weighing yourself is... It's a tyranny. How often I don't, would you weigh yourself? I haven't got any scales. Yeah. I don't see the point. I mean, basically, you go to the cupboard, you get out something you want to wear, and if it's a bit tight, don't have a bacon sandwich. So this a huge moment for you because you'd not been able to look at yourself in the mirror. I had really, really, really bad anxiety um, and had loads of body issues and yeah, everything like that. Yeah. Um, but I've been going through a treatment yeah. um, called TMS. Now it's it's called trans trans magnetical um, stimulation therapy. How um, do they work? Well, it's it's like a machine they put on your brain and it reduces the activity of um, depression and anxiety. You were physically shaking just at the thought of looking yourself yeah. in the mirror. Um, is it the kind of thing that you, um, you... Are you staring at yourself all the time now? Have no, you got over that? It's really weird. I mean, it, it's well with the surgery and stuff like that. Um, it consumed me. I used to think about having surgery, like, day in, day out, 24 hours a day. But now, I don't even think about it. Really? And if they, Was yeah, it just yeah. all rooted in anxiety? Is that what they say? Or is there a deeper sort of... It was, cause? yeah, it was more to do with the anxiety and, the, like, the sort of depression that I was going through. If then, we just, by chance, happen to have a mirror in bring the it room, on. would you... <laughs> Yeah. Look in it. We happen by chance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shall we bring it up? Go on. Go on. There it is, the just over there. <laughs> oh. Magic mirror. Ta da! <laughs> you, you, you actually say that talking about this helps you. That's right. Yeah, I think I think uh, people deal with things in different ways. Yeah. Um, I personally have found that every time I talk about it, it makes me feel better and you know I, I now am a motivational speaker and I speak at events and at schools mm -hmm. and every single time I give a talk it does it makes me feel good and it makes me feel good as well that I know I'm inspiring other people. Everybody's life looks so perfect, everybody's body looks so perfect and we all have insecurities. Uh, a, case of my, a friend of mine has a couple of moles on the, on just beside the nose. He is a handsome, handsome fella and that's all he thinks about. Mm -hmm. Yet every single person that ever sees him goes, He's a good looking fellow, isn't he? And nobody sees those moles, those particular moles. We all have insecurities, and I learned about 20, 20, 20 to 25 years to realise that nobody actually cared what I looked like. Everyone's worrying about themselves. Do you think that if you don't take as great care of yourself, you end up with the body that you deserve? Because oh, she's I've... got the body she deserves. Oh, you know, she deserves to look that great. Oh, got the body I deserve. But every dimple of my cellulite, I had such a great time getting it. Wild men. <laughs> Bogged her lying on the sofa watching telly eating pizza. It was the bad dark years. So this is this is what I've got. Let's just talk about all right, Jennifer Lopez, born stunning. How amazing does Gloria look? Oh, no. oh, yeah. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Amazing. I mean, not bad Jennifer Lopez. Angry, am I? You're amazing. When I look at my body, I think it looks great. But I'm not thinking, oh, I'm going to just walk around the block now and see if, what I can pick up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not. You know, no, I, I don't it, think about sex. Do you think that confidence comes from? Because have you always been like that? Or is that something that's 
become as you've got older? Well, I think that all the, all the um, partners I've had have been very, you know, they've been good. They've been complimentary and they've given me confidence and I've got the confidence anyway. And, you know, when I was at school, I had the big funny teeth and national health glasses, but inside I was a killer.